There is no doubt that you have watched Micah Richards on one of the TV shows as a football pundit, and he made you laugh or at least smile, thanks to his spontaneity and positive energy. If you haven't watched him live, you have certainly come across one of his videos on the internet. Who among us hasn't watched Kate Upto's introduction, in which she makes fun of him and his football career? So if you are wondering whether Micah was really bad as a player, or they are just joking with him, this video is for you. Because because we're going to give you a brief overview of his football career and it's up to you to judge whether he was good or not. So keep watching until the end. Micah was born in Birmingham, England in June 88, but he moved around Leeds with his family when he was young. He grew up there and joined Leeds United Academy as a striker, but he soon switched to Oldham Athletic Youth System at 12, where he also changed his position to right back or centre back, and in 2001, Man City scouted him and he joined their academy at 14. He played at all age levels with them and signed his first professional contract in 2005, and he made his debut for the first team the same same year, when he was only 17, in a game against Arsenal in October 2005, coming on as a substitute in the final 20 minutes. However, it took him over 3 months to play another match. Once again, he came on as a substitute in the last few minutes against Newcastle. But just 11 days later, he was a starter and played the whole match. And 2 weeks later, he scored his first goal, an important one in the last few minutes against Aston Villa in the EFA Cup. Following the Match, Micah ended up swearing during a live television interview. He recently mentioned that people still remind him of it today, saying, I won the Premier League and played for England. But it seems everyone always remembers me best for swearing live on BBC One on Sunday afternoon. But after that game, everyone started prizing him, from the manager to the media. This allowed him to take part in a group of matches until the end of the season, increasing his first team appearances to 16 games and that was the 2005-2006 season, which made everyone see him as a rising talent with bright future. That's why that summer, Spurs and West Ham offered 5 and 9 million pounds respectively to sign him, but Man City rejected both offers and declared that the player was not for sale, and to quell everyone's ambitions, he signed a new contract for the next 4 years. And they didn't simply renew his contract to avoid him leaving for another team, I mean keeping him and putting him on the the bench. No, he was the coach's first choice despite his young age. And he played in every match of the following 2006-2007 season, except when he was injured. Because he suffered a number of injuries that prevented him from playing many matches. But despite that, he made 35 appearances in all competitions and played some good matches, which led to him being nominated for the PFA Young Player of the Year award. Even though it was Cristiano Ronaldo who won it, but just the nomination means that he had an excellent season. Not to mention the fact that in the same season, he was called up to England's first national team to play a match against the Netherlands, to be the youngest defender to do so. And he had only played 28 games for the club in his entire career up to that point. The match ended in a draw, and he played a good game, and everyone was prizing him. And when the season ended and the summer transfer market began, rumors circulated that several clubs, including Chelsea, had made offers to Man City to sign the 18 years old Micah. But the club denied all these allegations, and the manager Stewart Pearce see that he had no intention of selling him, no matter what the offer, and that he's a good player capable of carrying Man City on his back for the next 10 years. You also see that he had never coached a player as good as him, despite his young age. But he didn't disappoint them, as he started the 2007-2008 season very well, winning the Player of the Month award in August, and scoring his first goal for the national team in the Euro 2008 qualifier the following month. And a few days later, he started the game against Aston Villa as team captain, in the absence of Richard Dunn becoming the youngest captain at the age of just 19. By this time, he had gained everyone's trust and started every game except the ones when he was injured, and he was nominated again for the PFA Young Player of the Year award. Although Cis Fabregas won it, but his nomination again shows how good he is. Although the new season has begun and Man City have been bought outright by new owners and Pablo Zabalita have been signed, Micah's place has not been affected, and he was appeared in 50 games across all competition throughout the season, but with
with the arrival of new owners, everything changed. All the spotlight was on them and people started to dream and demand results straight away, which led him to say, there is pressure with the new owners coming in. People expect us to win every game. We need room to build, maybe three or four years. That will be the time to judge us. But the full win season, I mean the 2009-2010 season, with the arrival of new coach Roberto Mancini, the competition between him and Zabaleta began to increase, causing his playing time to decrease, and prompting everyone to say that he would ask to leave soon, although not long before when he renewed his contract until 2013. But in the end, he stayed and finished the season with 29 appearances. The following season, the same thing happened. He appeared in most games despite competition from several old and new players. And that season saw Man City win their first title in over 35 years, winning the FA Cup after beating Stoke City. And Micah didn't learn his lesson because he swore again on live television due to his excitement. He was not the only one, but also Mario Balotelli who was with him, forcing ITV to apologize to viewers. But Man City were not prevented from renewing his contract until 2015. So the 2011-2012 season began, the season you all know well, a season that changed Man City's history forever after winning the Premier League in the last moments, in which Micah also contributed despite several injuries, as he played the majority of the games and not only helped keep clean sheets, but also contributed with successes more than any other defender in the Premier League, which earned him a nomination for the club's Player of the Year award, which Aguero of course won. But the full win season his injuries began to multiply, forcing him to miss a total of 5 months and play just 8 games in all competitions. In the full win season, the 2013-2014 season, the same thing happened. Numerous injuries and with the arrival of Pellegrini, who had lost faith in him, he only played 10 games in all competitions, where despite winning the Premier League, Michael missed out at the Premier League winner's middle, as he only played 2 league games. And that's what made him refuse to sign a new contract and decide to go alone for just one season to Fury to relaunch his career, because although he spent around a decade playing for the first team, he's still 26, but even though he went to Fiorentina and had less injuries, he only played 19 games in all competitions, because after he arrived, the coach changed his game plan to 3-5-2, which meant he lost his place due to his formation. So a year later, he went back to Man City, and his contract was expired, so he signed directly with Aston Villa in a free transfer for a four-year contract and started the 2015-2016 season as captain of the team. But as you know, Aston Villa in that season was suffering, which led them to be relegated. Michael recently admitted that when he left Man City, they had offered him a five and a half years contract for £100,000 a week, but he refused and left because he wanted to play more. But when he went to Aston Villa, his weekly wage was much lower, and when they were relegated, it was only 25,000 a week. This is not the worst part, because when they were relegated, all the players started to leave, but he decided to stay loyal to the team, and also to have more playing minutes. But the worst scenario happened, because with many injuries and lack of fitness, he lost his place even in the championship, where in the 2016-2017 season, he played only 3 games, and in the following 2 seasons, he didn't play neither a game to announce in 2019, his retirement at the age of only 31. And this was certainly due to the large number of injuries. Because although we didn't talk in detail about the injuries he had, he suffered from them every season from a young age that made him miss several games sometimes for months. And the number has increased as he got older, as he played in his whole career with all the clubs 295 games. And at the end of the 2011-2012 season, he had played 200 26 games, which means that since that period, he has only played 69 additional games over 7 seasons, which means that the best period was at the beginning of his career. I mean if he retired after winning the Premier League in 2012, his career would not miss anything. Career goes like that, mine went like that, then like that.
The same thing happened with the national team, where he played for all the age groups and even the first team despite his young age. But after a lot of competition with several good players in his position, as well as when Fabio Capello became England coach, he was never called up for more than four years. And Micah said recently that he didn't know why, even though he was performing well. Because after Fabio Capello left in 2012, he went straight back to the national team. But as you know, after 2012, his career it wasn't good enough. And now you know what he does for a living. When you watch him, you will notice that he was born to do this job. And you will also notice that sometimes they make fun of him. But you have to know that they hired him for this reason. I mean to spread his positive energy and make the show more enjoyable to watch. Otherwise, they could hire a boring retired footballer and he would analyze the games and give his opinions. But what Micah does isn't easy for anyone because it's part of who he is.